Have you ever wished that you could make money blogging, but you have no idea what to write about or how to write posts that will actually get views? In this video, I'm going to show you a super simple and virtually free method for conducting keyword research and generating a list of topic ideas that you actually have a chance to rank for on Google. If you're new to my channel, my name is Corey Alexander. I'm a writer and content creator that's been blogging since 2018. It's my mission to share with you everything I know about how to make money online with your writing. So maybe you've been wanting to get into the blogging game for a while, but you have been feeling a little bit intimidated. And truthfully, the beginner blogger of 2022 faces a lot of challenges. For instance, how do you know what topics to write about? How do you write blog posts that actually get views? What even is SEO? And how does all this actually help you make money? I'm going to answer all those questions in today's video and more. I specifically wanted to create something that is useful for beginners, so I'm going to show you how to conduct keyword research and come up with a content plan for either a new blog or a client's blog. Of course, the next step after conducting keyword research is to actually write the blog post, but we have a lot of ground to cover today, so I'm going to save that for a separate video. So if you don't want to miss it, make sure you click on the subscribe button below, and that way you'll be kept in the loop when I upload the next video. Before we jump into this tutorial, you might be wondering what SEO is and how you can make money writing SEO optimized content. SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization. And the goal of optimizing your posts for SEO is to get your post to rank on the first page of the Google search results. And there are a couple different ways you can utilize this skill to make money. First, you can use SEO skills to create your own blog and write all the content for it. If you can grow your blog to the point where it's getting a lot of traffic from Google, you can then monetize your blog by adding ads, affiliate links, and your own digital products. But if you choose to go this route, then you need to know that this is a long-term strategy. You will not get your pages to rank overnight or even in a couple of months. It can take months for Google to pay attention to your website, even if you do everything right. That's because it takes time for you to build up enough content for Google to understand what your website's about. And it also takes time to build up a high enough domain authority that Google begins to trust your website. But once you get a blog that has consistent traffic, it's the best because you start getting that paycheck month after month with very minimal maintenance on your part. For example, I started my blog back in 2018 and I worked really hard on it for about three years. And then last year, I didn't really do very much with it because I was focusing on other projects within my business but it still brought in thousands of dollars last year. So once you've built up that asset, it's the gift that just keeps giving. Now, to be honest with you, this tutorial will help you get off to a running start, but it's by no means all there is to blogging. There is so much that goes into a successful blog, but the best thing is to just get started and look at it as a long-term investment. The other option is to monetize your SEO skills as a freelancer because a lot of small businesses don't have time to update their blog or they don't know how to optimize their content for SEO. So as a freelancer, you can swoop in there and save the day by offering SEO optimized blog writing as your service. If you choose to go this route, you should definitely check out the video I uploaded the other day about cold pitching. So by the time you finish watching this video, you'll not only know how to offer this service, but you'll know how to find clients to offer this service too. Okay, so are you ready to get started? Let's jump in. The first step is to figure out what kind of content you're going to write about by conducting keyword research. Now, there are a lot of different ways to conduct keyword research, and a lot of them involve using tools that have a pretty steep learning curve, like Ahrefs or SEMrush. Now, don't get me wrong, these are amazing research tools, and when you're ready to up your SEO game, they're definitely worth investing in. But the problem with these kind of tools is that they're pretty expensive. HREF plans start at $99 a month, which is a considerable amount to invest as a new blogger. The other problem is that it takes time to learn how to use these tools. The first time I logged into HREFs, I was completely overwhelmed and I ended up needing to take a course to figure out how to use it properly. So my goal for you is to keep things really simple and help you get started without feeling overwhelmed or spending a lot of money. So to that end, this method will consist of three tools two of which are totally free, and the third one is very cheap. The first tool we're going to use today is answerthepublic.com. If you've seen my video about cold pitching, then this will be familiar. On this website, you get up to three free searches per day, which is plenty for our purposes. All you're going to do is type in one or two words that represent the niche you or your client's blog is about. 
So for example, I have a niche blog about functional footwear, so I can start off by simply typing shoes. <clears throat> now I get these lovely images that come up with tons of keyword phrases that people are searching for. It's organized into questions, prepositions, and comparisons. At the top of the screen here on the right side, you'll see a button where you can download this information as a spreadsheet, so you're going to do that. Now, if you want, you can do two more searches that are relevant to your niche. So I could put in footwear, for example, and download a second spreadsheet. Next, you're going to head over to Google Sheets and start a new sheet. Click the file drop down and click on import. And you'll have a few options here. I always just select append to current sheet and click import data. And we can just rename this shoes keyword research. And we can just clean up this spreadsheet a little bit. Delete row and we'll filter these so that we can organize them however we want. Now I want you to take a look through your spreadsheet and highlight questions and search terms that appear most relevant to your niche and what your blog is about. So just remember here that user intent is really important. Um, for example, my shoe blog is an informational blog where I post how-to articles and reviews. So I'm not actually a shoe vendor who sells shoes, so I wanna avoid terms where that user intent is clearly to find a shoe. So here we have, can shoes go in the dryer? That looks like a good informational article to me, so I'm going to highlight that. Can shoes be stretched? Looks good. How shoes are made. How shoes affect your health. How shoes should fit. These are all good search terms for my blog. Shoes can wear without socks. Shoes can be recycled. Shoes can cause back pain. What to wear, what shoes to wear with mom jeans. So this to me is more of a fashion question. So my blog isn't really about fashion. So it probably isn't a good idea for me to search these terms. I'm not going to look at all of them in the interest of time, but I'm just going to highlight a few. And then I'm gonna click the filter button here and filter by color filter by fill color and select the color that I had highlighted. So now this just condenses our list into the search terms that we are working with. Now that we have our list of content ideas and keyword phrases, we need to do a little bit of competitor analysis because we want to know that this search term that we're writing about actually has a snowball's chance of ranking on page one of Google. And again, there's lots of fancy competitor analysis tools out there, but since we're bootstrapping it here, we're gonna to stick to a method that's a little bit more manual, but it's free. First, I want you to head over to moz.com and create a free account. I'll leave a link in the description box, but I don't need to show you how to do that. It's pretty straightforward. Second, you're gonna go and download the Moz Chrome extension. So this is a super handy feature that Moz gives you for free. And what it does is it can tell you what the page authority and domain authority is for every website that you visit. But it's also very useful when used with Google, which I'm going to show you in just a minute. The other Chrome extension I want you to download is called Keywords Everywhere. This tool also has a free version, which is pretty useful. But if you can cough up the $10 for the paid version, it is well worth it. For $10, you get 100,000 credits, which basically means you get to know the search volume of 100,000 terms before you need to pay them more money. These credits last for a year and are more than enough than what we're going to be using it for. I use this tool all the time. I think my credits expire in a couple of months and I still have a ton left. So it is worth paying for this feature, but it is technically optional, which I will explain why a little bit later. Now that you have your Chrome extensions all set up, you're going to head over to Google and enter one of your search terms from your spreadsheet. Make sure that both your Chrome extensions are on and you should see some interesting info appear. So for example, I Googled, can shoes go into the dryer? And I have my search results, but we also now see a little bar appear under each of the search results. 
you'll see numbers that say PA and DA, which stands for page authority and domain authority. So basically the way you can think of this is as a metric for how much Google trusts this web page and how much it trusts the website overall. The higher the number, the more authority that website has. And the more authority it has, the more likely it is to rank high in the search results. Now, the thing to understand about this is that these numbers are a Moz made metric that correlates with what we know about how Google ranks pages, with a large factor being how many backlinks that website or web page has. So we don't need to get into the weeds on domain authority today, but the thing to remember is that in general, the higher the number, the harder it's going to be to compete for that spot in the Google rankings. But the other thing to look out for is how relevant the website is to the topic they're talking about. You'll find that a lot of the websites that are ranking are huge websites that talk about everything and anything. As a small niche site, you still have a chance at competing with these larger sites, because if you continue to blog about one topic, Google will eventually see you as more of an authority on that topic than a website that writes about everything. So when you see huge websites like Forbes and Quora and WikiHow, it doesn't mean that you're doomed to never outranking them. Instead, what you want to look for are the websites that are within your niche. And these websites are your direct competitors. So how high is their domain authority? As a new website, I look for websites that have a domain authority of 30 or less. If I see these kinds of pages are ranking on page one, I feel that I may have a shot at ranking. So here where I searched, can shoes go into the dryer? I do see some of those big sites like WikiHow and Quora. However, I also see a couple of sites that have low DAs of 19 and 21, which makes me feel like this is a term that I have a shot at ranking for. Now let's take this other example, shoes you can wear without socks. When I search for this, I see a lot of domains with pretty high authority. My competitors on page one are in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, so it's not likely an ideal search term for me. I do see one website that is under 30, but it looks like an actual shoe store, so not an actual competitor. And that's where Keywords Everywhere comes in. On the right-hand side, you'll see that there are two sections, People Also Search For and Long Tail Keywords. So if you're seeing a lot of competition for the initial term you searched for, click around on some of these other terms and see if you can find one that has less competition. For example, let's try running shoes you can wear without socks. Now I see the second result appears to be a blog and the DA is only 16. Let's look a little further down, 32, 40, and further down here, we have another result that's 21. So to me, this would be a better keyword phrase for me to target than the one that I had originally planned on my spreadsheet. So I will take that term and I will update it on my spreadsheet to reflect the one with lower competition. So the last step is to create our content planner. So each time you find a phrase that you have a decent shot at ranking for, you can update your spreadsheet and this will turn into your content planner. So ideally you wanna get as many topic ideas on here as you can. I only have a few just as an example, but I would keep going with this until you get about 20 topics. So I would update a couple of these columns just to customize it for our purposes. So I would put EA volume. I would make note of the domain authority of your competition that is ranking on page one. So I think we had 21 for this running shoes you can wear without socks now if you are using the paid version of keywords everywhere there is another step you can take here which is to organize your content by keyword volume keyword volume means how many searches this keyword phrase is getting a month for example running shoes you can wear without socks is showing a search volume of 10 searches per month which is very low but the thing I want you to remember here is that this number is not at all accurate. You need to think of it as more of a relative metric. 
In fact, the search volume here is likely significantly higher than what's being reported. So ideally, you want to find something that has a high search volume and relatively low competition. And that would be the target kind of blog post you would want to write first because it has the potential to bring you the most amount of traffic. However, I don't want you to get too caught up on the search volume. First of all, if you see zero as the search volume for a keyword, don't panic because even though the volume is likely small, it isn't actually zero or it wouldn't have come up in the keywords everywhere or answer the public searches. And the thing is, you are way better off targeting a keyword with a volume of zero that you have a chance at ranking for than you would be at targeting a keyword with super high volume that has a ton of competition. Because if you end up on page 30 of the SERPs, it's like you might as well not have written the blog post at all. So go ahead and organize your content planner by competition first and volume second. So here, Can Shoes Go in the Dryer has a volume of 720. So I would probably write this blog post first before I write the other one. So yes, this is more of a manual, slightly time consuming process, but it's great for beginners who want to get started with keyword research and don't want to invest a whole lot of money just yet. And now all that's left to do is to start pumping out that SEO optimized content for your blog or for your clients. I'll be covering that in my next video. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button below so you don't miss it. SEO is a huge topic and this was kind of a high level overview. But if you have any questions about anything I talked about in today's video, hit me up in the comments section and I will do my best to help. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.